Hello, this is a review of energy and momentum. They are frequently used in uh, a very easy way to solve a mechanics problem versus dynamics in kinematics. Um, energy is used when we change height, right? Changing height, uh, changing height is a, a potential energy change. <clears throat> momentum is used always during collisions, and the reason it's used during collisions is that depending on the kind of uh, collision energy may or may not be conserved, but momentum will always be conserved. It's important to define what consists of system, right? Is it a particle? Is it a bunch of objects? Whatever the system is, right, and the pieces that are inside it, work, work or impulse is what crosses that and changes energy and changes momentum. I'll go over that a little bit more in a second. Uh, work is force times distance. More importantly, it also is the cosine of the angle, right? Work, the force has to be in the direction of movement. If the, if the force is perpendicular, cosine is 90, there's no work done. Positive work is when force is in the direction of motion. Negative, if the, if the force opposes the direction of motion. Uh, the work energy theorem says that work equals the change in energy. If you do work on a system, you increase the energy. And so as a result of that theorem, the units for work and energy are the same. They're a joule or a newton meter. Work and energy are scalars as opposed to momentum, which are vectors. Uh, if you have a variable force, you can calculate work by taking the integral of force over distance. Uh, two examples of the work energy function. Uh, one is that the work done in compressing a spring is equal to the spring potential energy. So if you integrate kx dx, you end up getting one half kx squared, which you're probably f familiar with as the spring potential energy, right? That's the work necessary to compress the spring. Gravitational potential energy can, can be converted to kinetic energy. So the gravitational potential energy mgh um, that's actually work done, right? Gravitational work done is converted to kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. Uh, often we use bar charts to, to describe energy. And the key thing in here is that uh, the sum of kinetic and potential energy is equal to the total energy, right? And it, exchange, it can exchange back and forth in the spring system between spring potential energy and the blocks uh, kinetic energy. We saw that we call that sum of kinetic and potential energy the total mechanical energy, right? And in an isolated system where there's no external work done or friction, uh, that mechanical energy is constant. So the other thing we know is that potential energy function is equal to the negative integral uh, the negative integral of work done right if we rearrange this if we rearrange this equation we get du equals minus integral f dx and force is equal to the negative derivative of potential energy which was here before Uh, yeah, and so if you consider the work done by gravity, it acts downward. When gravity does positive work, right, it's pushing downward, the gravitational potential energy is reduced, right? So that's how you get the delta U equals minus F dx. And this applies uh, cons conservation, right, the initial kinetic and potential energy is equal to the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy. That's only when conservative forces act. Uh, Non-conservative force would be friction. Um, we often also use energy diagrams, which is really just a potential, a diagram of potential energy. Uh, versus position, 
and what we what we can say is the lowest point that's the point of stability it'll the system will, will will rest there if you have a curve that is like this for whatever reason that's going to be unstable uh, and you're at the top it could go either way right but in this in this curve here this is stable it will rest it will find its resting spot at the bottom uh, in, in case of a non-isolated system right we have we have this sum of energy this is total mechanical energy but it can be changed by either friction which is creates an internal energy a change in internal energy that's the work done by friction or just work done right all right moving on to impulse and before i get to impulse uh the question to to answer when you when i uh when i ask is uh the coffee mug the coffee mug that i'm holding right now says f equals ma on it it was made by a student that's the question what does the coffee mug say all right mom momentum is mass times velocity it's also referred to as p uh, impulse is force times time and that's called j and we also know that the impulse causes a change in momentum so force times dt equals delta p and the units are newton seconds or kilogram meters per second uh, momentum compared to to uh, energy as a vector so what that says is if you have a um, if you have two objects that are moving in x and y directions you need to do the sum of momentum in the x and the sum of the momentum in the y right is constant you have to solve those those equations separately and if you've got components they're not orthogonal uh, you need to separate them into their x and y components all right so the nice thing as i said about momentum is that collisions uh collisions is a good a good place to use momentum uh when they when two objects collide the force they exert is equal and opposite right due to newton's third law the time is equal, right? The time that they're in contact, they're going to be in contact the same time. So therefore, the impulse is equal to both. And we can use that to determine the change in momentum of one or the other or both. Uh, there are two types of collisions. Uh, one of the collisions is elastic, and that's when objects rebound. Energy is conserved in an elastic collision. Inelastic collision is when they stick together and energy is not conserved in that case but fortunately momentum is conserved in both cases and a few a few key um, q-tips for collisions right if you have a two-dimensional collision and the objects are the same mass the objects depart the angle of departure is 90 degrees and the other thing is if we have an elastic collision Right, two bowling balls hitting at the bottom. Their difference between initial velocities is going to be equal to the difference between final velocities. Right, if you think about the Newton's cradle, right, the initial velocities we can say they're going at the same velocity inward, and when they when they rebound, they're going to go, and the difference between the incoming velocities and the outgoing velocity is going to be the same. All right, one last type of system or, or problem that you can solve is what we call deformable system. One of those is two masses on a spring. And so the question is, what's the speed? What's the speed of each of these blocks when the spring is released? And I won't go through the whole list of, of uh, solution there in the slides. But the two, the two steps that you use to solve this is that potential energy of the spring is converted to kinetic energy of the blocks. So you write an equation, an energy equation. And then the other conservation of momentum, the momentum of the blocks to begin with is zero. 
And so the final momentum, the sum of the final momentums is also going to be zero. All right, we'll stop there, and I'll, I'll go through these pr problems, these FRQs, in, the, in the ne another uh, lecture. Thanks.